G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at some of the more unpopular AFL opinions that are out there. These opinions belong to you guys. I put out a story on Instagram like 24 hours ago asking you for your unpopular AFL opinions so that I would do a video reacting to them one by one. Now we've got a lot of responses, not all of them made it. I have to try and make this as concise as possible, but nonetheless, I am going to be reacting to your hot takes. Before we crack into them one by one, if you could do me a favor guys, I have looked at my analytics and we've got a lot of new viewers on the channel over the last 28 days, which is fantastic. But I can't help but notice that 57% of the people who have watched the video in the last 28 days haven't subscribed. So if you could take two seconds to subscribe to the channel, if you want to see some more AFL content, that would be much appreciated. All right, now we're not going to mess around here. Let's get straight into them. The first one is from Lockie Box, and his is that Prime Judd is better than Prime Gary Ablett Jr. I can sort of agree with this one. I know that's really contentious and I'm obviously going to have some bias here as an Eagles fan, but I do probably agree that the absolute best version of Chris Judd might be better than the absolute best version of Gary Ablett Jr. The difference is, the key difference, I think Gaz stayed better for longer. So when you know deciding who's the GOAT, you know it's, it's up in the air, but I'd probably agree that in Judd in his prime was probably better, even though the stats won't show that. Then we've got a couple uh, related to Geelong, and uh, I'm going to group a couple of these together when they're conflicting or they're the same. So Ken D'Souza says that Geelong will finish top four. That's his unpopular AFL opinion. And Jetty says that the Cats actually really suck. So we've got two divergent opinions here. Two fairly unpopular takes, probably. I feel inclined to agree with neither of them. I don't really see Geelong making the top four with their lack of midfield depth. And I know injuries were an issue, and that's probably my response to Jetty as well. I think injuries did impact Geelong and you know their injuries impacted a lot of teams but in particular areas where they were vulnerable so for instance Cam Guthrie I think was a a big miss I'm not sure if I see Geelong really having the, the what it takes to compete for the premiership again in 2024 however I also wouldn't bet on them finishing bottom four so they're probably going to be treading water this year in my opinion Lindsay Jonathan and Cooper Baker this is both about Ollie Wines Ollie Wines did not deserve his 2021 brown though it was Bonds and Oli Wines Brownlow medal year was worse than Lockie Neal's in 2023. I feel harsh about this one. Uh, I am kind of critical of the Brownlow medal in a sense. Like, I'm, I don't want to be a party pooper, but I just kind of have always been a little bit skeptical that it's a really good measure of awarding the best and fairest uh, player in that sense. I think there's better awards out there like the Coaches Awards. So it producing weird results like this doesn't really phase me that much. It's, I think it's just kind of a fun night and then I kind of let it go. But Ollie Wines did have a terrific year. He broke the record. I think he broke the record for the most votes in a ga in a season rather. You have to reward that consistency. In both years, I do think Bontempelli, well, certainly in 2023, I think Bontempelli was the rightful winner. I can't really remember 2021. Although I will admit, I don't think Wines was the best player, but to say he doesn't deserve it is probably a bit harsh. James Sned and Luke McMahon both chime in with Kelly Underwood is a great commentator. I wouldn't go as far as to say great, but I, she doesn't bother me like uh, with other people. I do think she gets harshly targeted and, you know, there's been viral clips of her saying, you know, the orange team and stuff like that, which is which is a bit of a laugh, but at the same time, it's a little bit played out by now and I think I think she's okay. She generally doesn't bother me, which is saying something because there's a lot of commentators that do. She's nowhere near the worst for me. Raz says that Jack Steele is a bit overrated. Uh, again, like uh, to have this proper conversation with you, I'd want to hear a little bit more elaboration, but I realize you can't do that. I'm going to say that he's not. I just think he's had a couple of injury interrupted pre seasons, from what I can gather. Carlton Flaggers reckons that Collingwood will lose every game they play against Carlton in 2024, including the grand final. I think this one's a bit tongue in cheek. There's a laugh emoji in it, and his username is Carlton Flaggers or hers. Uh, look, while the things have happened, that's a bold prediction. Um, I wouldn't bet on it, but at the same time, I think we'll, they'll, we'll see some good games from those two teams. Timmy Five reckons if the ball hits the post and goes back into play, it should be play on. I actually don't hate this. I'm kind of a football traditionalist in a sense, and I am kind of think it would be a weird rule change, but at the same time, I think I could live with it because I think it kind of also makes sense. Matty Pollock has an interesting one. The Eagles should have kept Hamish Brayshaw on their list over some of the mids we kept on the list at the time. Interesting. To be honest, like with all due respect to Hamish, I don't think he would still be on the list anyway. However, if you make the argument, you know, how does he compare to Xavier O'Neill and, um, you know, Zane True? Personally, I think Zane True is probably the most talented of the three. But then again, Hamish Brayshaw just won a Sandover medal. Again, I don't think we missed out by not keeping him. But it's a fair question. Would Xavier O'Neill be capable of winning a Sandover medal? Fair question. Then we got a couple of Essendon ones from Ben Molama and Milo Heffernan, who both have divergent opinions once again. So uh, Ben says Essendon will make the prelim this year. And Milo or Milo says Essendon signings will make them worse and they will finish bottom four. 
Now, this is kind of a hard thing to predict. I, uh, logically speaking, I don't think that they necessarily will make them worse. I think individually, they're all decent players. None of them are strictly game players that are going to elevate them that much, though. I think it's just more about consolidating and filling a few gaps. So it would be completely baseless for me to agree that they're going to make the team worse. Like, from a logical point of view, I can't make that argument. I'd be surprised if they make a prelim, though. I think I've talked about Essendon before, and I think this, it, a lot of their fortunes kind of rest on some of these guys who have played 30, 40 games or maybe a little bit less, you know, really turning it up a notch and improving them as a whole. I think that's where the growth comes from rather than strictly the recruits, but they did need to keep back. Filmania Movies says Kane Corns does make some good calls and Rushby Luke, shout out Luke, former teammate, says Kane Corns, that's all. Uh, I agree, Kane Corns does make some good calls. I think he also makes some calls that are worth criticism. Uh, but I, I said this in a previous video, I think uh, I think there's a place in the world, in the AFL media world for someone like Kane Corns because he says shit that other people don't. That being said, I'm going to criticize the ones I disagree with. Riles Macca, shout out, great channel, says Papley and Blakey to make all Australian and Adams to be recruit of the year. We've got a Swans fan in the house. Look, Papley and Blakey winning all Australian individually makes sense to me. Like, Papley is probably, you know, he's a damn good small forward. He'd probably need, like, Charlie Cameron and, uh, you know, Toby Green to have off years to really make a spot, I, in my opinion. I don't think he has quite the same production as those guys. Like, Green kicked 66 goals this year. Taylor Adams could be the recruit of the year because he was fairly cheap in the end, wasn't he? And Sydney are going to be in the thick of it. Um, and also, Blakey is a, is a fantastic player. And I think I actually predicted him as my surprise All-Australian 12 months ago. So to see him make All-Australian would make sense. I actually think it's more likely Blakey than Papley, um, which maybe that's my unpopular opinion, but we'll see. Flynn Stanfield says, Cats Dynasty is the best in a head-to-head -head sense. So when you say head-to-head, -head, you mean like if the teams played each other? I kind of I kind of see that. Like, obviously, we'll never really know the answer. But I, if I had to say who's the best team I've ever seen, I actually think Geelong 07-08 was probably the most formidable team I've ever seen. I think what Haw made Hawthorne, uh, well, their dynasty was arguably better on results because they won three in a row, right? And then you also consider Brisbane, who won three in a row, uh, row all away from home at the MCG. So which one's the best? It's, it's hard to judge. But if you're asking, like, in a head-to-head -head sense, I presume you mean... Like the, the 22 that ran out there, I think Geelong, probably, I'm probably in agreement with you. Bailey Allen has got a red hot take on Luke Beveridge. Luke Beveridge is the worst coach in the comp and is the worst premiership coach ever. I don't know if this is an, like an emotional response from a Bulldogs fan or not, uh, but you know, it, it, on the surface, I looked at it and I was like, well, that's a bit brutal. And then I thought about it and I was like, you could make an argument for it. Not, I'm not actually anti-beverage as such, but you could make the argument that from a performance versus list talent point of view, beverage is underperforming. I think that's fair to say. Like the Bulldogs list is very, very stacked and they've failed to make finals this year and they were a little bit lucky with Carlton like losing the way that they did the year before. From If memory serves me well, they snuck into the finals. So... The performance isn't great. Uh, as for worst premiership coach ever, I think just the fact that he got them there from seventh sort of indicates he's a good coach, right? Like I think that Bulldog side won a premiership almost before it was ready. So I think he deserves credit for that. But I suppose the bar is quite high for premiership coaches. So who's the worst one ever? That's a hard one. Uh, worst coach in the comp. I don't think he's the worst coach in the comp, but you can make an argument he's underperforming maybe more than any other coach. Other than Adam Simpson, I suppose. But Adam Simpson doesn't have the talent and he had, he had more injuries, that's for sure. Eddie Edwards then says the Swans have the best list in the comp. I think the talent is unreal. The reason I would disagree with this is just because they probably have a few list gaps. I don't think their key back situation is rock solid. Their key forwards are a little bit raw, like Logan and Amati. And even the ruck situation, Grundy. Uh, so that's three key position roles. They haven't completely... Well, they're certainly not elite in, that's for sure. That being said, the young talent is good. And I think, you know, they'll be, they'll be in the mix for a flag again. Cooperlicious, I want to see more innovation in Guernsey designs as well as names on the back. I don't mind this. So names on the back, yeah, again, I'm a traditionalist, but I can't really argue against it. And I think if it happened within a year, I'd be used to it. So I'm fine with that. I do like traditional AFL jumpers, but maybe they could have a bit of a mix up with a, like a, a clash kit or something like that. And we see in the Premier League, they mix those around a lot more. I don't want to go fully random, like having, uh, you know, a third alternate kit of like just purple for no reason, like Liverpool did a few years ago. I don't want to go that far, far but I, I think that experimenting with a little bit would be good. That being said, I don't want the Eagles to do that. Leo King, member of the channel says, Oscar Allen and Nick Larkey are the best two key forwards in the league. I like this and I would love to agree with you. Um, I would say that both of them performed unbelievably well 
particularly Larky when you consider 71 goals, but Oscar Allen was also huge with 53. Both of them were unbelievable in the worst two sides of the competition, and those two sides were the worst by some distance. But could I make the argument they're better than Charlie Kerno or Jeremy Cameron? I still wouldn't go that far, but maybe that will flip. Maybe that's the next Cam uh, Cameron and Kerno. Who knows? I'd like to think so. Jack Blischk, I hope I'm saying that right, says home sides should host the grand final instead of it being at the MCG every year. Yeah, I mean, I, there's no argument against that. I do like an MCG grand final, but if, if we snapped our fingers and said, okay, from now on, the home side plays there every year, I wouldn't complain. And that's probably the way it should be. I do like MCG grand finals, but it's it's always better when they're neutral games. You know what I mean? Like, if it's like Adelaide, Sydney at the MCG, uh, MCG I think it would be like kind of magical. But uh, if it's like, yeah, a, a Melbourne side hosting a higher placed interstate side, that's where it gets iffy, right? Brendan Courtney says, Patrick Cripps and Carlton are overrated. Carlton were lucky to make the finals with bad umpiring decisions. Shout out, Brendan. He's been on this channel before. I think that's really bloody harsh. I don't know if Patrick Cripps is overrated as such. I think his Brownlow was a surprise. I don't think anyone really considers him in the top handful of players of the comp. I think he's just considered a good midfielder, which is what he is. As for Carlton getting there, no, I disagree. Like, they... They smashed some quality teams this year. Well, in particular, Port Adelaide, they smashed. Um, they challenged Brisbane at the Gabba. They beat Collingwood. No, I think the Carlton hype is real. I disagree with you there, Courts, but fair enough. Baker says, Collingwood won on their sheer grit alone. Their game plan was worked out when the Hawks beat them. So I, uh, I don't know if that's completely true. You know, in their finals performances, I think they did a pretty good at strangling their opposition to some degree. They won them all, all narrowly, but their defense was really good in those games, generally speaking. Um, and also around that period, I think Moore was already out for that game and Nick Dacos got injured in that game from memory. So maybe that's not really the reason why they lost, but like they were vulnerable at that point. So I, I don't think it's fair to extrapolate that and say that was when Collingwood got worked out. Martin Reed says, I'd rather watch a low scoring tactical dour game as opposed to a free flowing high scoring game. I can relate to this a bit. I think it's all about balance. Like if every game was low scoring and dour, I wouldn't value it. But I, I do get what you're saying. I, I do kind of like those games, but it's as long as it's close, right? Wildco8 says, Gold Coast still won't make the eight this year, while Alexander Mola says, Gold Coast will make the eight for the first time. First of all, I don't think Gold Coast not making the eight is a particularly unpopular opinion. I think it's probably more likely than unlikely, but I do have genuine faith that they can make it. I think with this Hardwick factor, makes me think this might be the year that they really click, or at least get really close, like ninth or something like that which I think would be a big win in Hardwick's first year. Dominic Cole says, Collingwood's 2010 to 2011 team would beat the Hawthorne uh, 2013 to 15 team. Actually, it says could be. Uh, well, I, I suppose by default, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we see all kinds of absurd results happen all the time, but, uh, but I, I presume you're getting at like which one was better. That Collingwood team was really damn good and probably left the premiership on the table. Um, I think, I could be wrong, but I feel like in 2011, the grand final, they were favorites and Geelong beat them. Not massive favorites, but slight favorites. That, that They looked like they were set up for a dynasty and then players, they started shedding players and then they just kind of fell in a little bit of a heap there as Buckley took over. As for, could they beat Hawthorne's team? I, I get what you're saying. I, I guess I don't really have a strong opinion on it. Like Hawthorne were dominant to some extent in 2013. I think that was the only year out of the three that they'd finished on top. They smashed Sydney in that grand final and it obviously smashed West Coast in that grand final. It kind of got a sense of they just lifted to the occasion. So to be honest, if they were playing tomorrow, I'd probably, probably tip Hawthorne narrowly. But yeah, who knows? I, I get what you're saying. Collingwood were a good team. Falcon WT says, West Coast 2023 season is a blessing in disguise as all our young players got a taste of AFL early. <sighs> yeah, I wouldn't go as far as to say blessing in disguise. Where I would slightly disagree with that is just that I would have traded five games each of experience less for each young player to not lose five games by 100 points, particularly the Sydney game and the Fremantle game. So I, I get what you're saying. Like long term, it's better that Elijah Hewitt's played 14 games now, Junby's played 17, Long's played 19 or whatever. Uh, yeah, we're going to get some benefit out of that, unlike 2022 where we didn't really get much out of it. Uh, but I don't know if I will reflect on this season as a uh, one that we needed to have, so to speak. Rowan Disley says the change to four on-field umpires will make the game better and we should persist with this. Yeah, I don't really think I've noticed that many teething issues with the, the four umpire system. I think the game has, already sees a lot of missed calls and yeah, I, I, I kind of support that as well. Tinker with it for a little bit longer. I don't really see the downside, to be honest. Punt Road Post, shout out, says Melbourne will win the 2024 Grand Final. That's a bold call. 
yeah, there's a lot of negative narrative around Melbourne that I feel like my gut feeling is like the the discussion around their culture and stuff, I think is a little bit sensationalist and speculative and we don't really know. And that, that will all unfold as the season pro- like progresses. If they fall in a heap, we'll know the answer. But gee, it would be a really good narrative if they come out and win the 2024 Premiership. On list talent, I agree that absolutely they can win it. Uh, but I don't have them as a clear favorite, that's for sure. Judd York says, Sam Mitchell won us the flag in 2018. So what Judd York is referring to here is that Sam Mitchell was an assistant coach for one year at West Coast, or a year and a half. And, uh, and then I think he was midfield coach. West Coast midfield performed really well that year. I think he deserves some credit. I think we do fall into this trap, though, of, of kind of like correlation equaling causation. Like We did say the same thing when Adam Simpson, in his second season at West Coast, took us to the grand final. Guys like Don Pike were given a lot of credit for that. And was Phil Walsh involved as well? There was, it was either that year or another year that Phil Walsh might have been 2011 where Phil Walsh got credited for it. But either way, the common denominator is Adam Simpson. Like he deserves some credit if he was there at two different grand finals. That being said, you know, winning your premiership's a team effort and Sam Mitchell certainly got the most of that midfield, particularly at the back end of the year. It really clicked. So he deserves a lot of credit. I wouldn't go as far as to say one person won it. Ben Herbert says, Nick Nat was the best uh, ruckman in the league. Injuries ruined him. Gorn is not as good as Nat Nui. That's his unpopular opinion. Uh, Yeah, it's a hard one to make because the, the... Injury excuse always falls flat. Like, nobody cares. And it might be true, and it is for, true for Nick Nat. Like, he won back-to-back all Australians in 2020 and 2021, but because he ended the his career, like, irrelevant because of injuries, people aren't going to treat him with that same respect. But I, as an Eagles fan, I, I privately, secretly agree with you, to be honest. Seth Arv says, Tom Green to win the Brownlow and Giants to win the Premiership. Not a bad shout. Tom Green is exactly the sort of player, like, stylistically, that would win the Brownlow. Like, Inside ball magnet. Lockie Neal, Patrick Cripps, Ollie Wines were the last three winners. Lockie Neal before that. He fits the profile. He gets enough of the ball. And GWS winning the Premiership, I mean, they got pretty close this year, all things considered. Seth also says, Richmond surprises everyone to make the top four. I can't see this. I know they've got amazing top-end talent still. Like, Dusty's still a good player. Shea Bolton as well, I think, is an amazing player and could, like, really take the next step. But after that, like, they don't really have the same the same guns that they used to. And the, the next layer coming into this team... I just don't see it. I, I'd be surprised if they make finals, let alone top four. Ecolophile, that's Emily, friend of the channel, says West Coast are worth the heartbreak. Agreed. Shout out, Emily. Brian Antonio says West Coast deserve bottom and hope them getting smashed never ends. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for your input. That is unpopular. And finally, Ash, another friend of the channel, says I support Collingwood. That's her unpopular opinion. You know why? This is actually a problem with me, Ash, because you and I used to work together and you were an Eagles fan before. I know that your partner is a Collingwood fan, but it is your responsibility to make sure your kid grows up an Eagles fan. So I am disgusted by this. I'm just kidding, Ash. I hope you're doing well. Anyway, guys, that is all the unpopular opinions we've got time for today. If you like this concept, comment some more of your own and potentially I'll do another one before the preseason starts. Same thing with the underrated, overrated video I did a few days ago. Um, If you want to add to that in the comment section of that video and the same here, then I'll do a part two if there is demand for it. So hope you're doing well, guys. I really appreciate all the support on the channel lately. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.